Hi, I'm Suzanne Rowland. I live in Austin, Texas. However, the last few years I've been back in my childhood home in Florida as a caregiver for my father who had dementia and Parkinson's um, and passed last year, and now for my aunt um, as she's nearing the end of her life following um, some strokes. Sacred rebel, or what does it mean to me to be a sacred rebel? Um, what comes to me is, is actually a connection I have with my grandfather. He shows up for me as an eagle. Um, but what I, rem I, what I remember a few years ago, as I was kind of beginning a spiritual path and trying to explain this to my parents, um, and it didn't make it any sense to them, and I, I told them that I was preparing to go on this trip, and it just felt right, like I'd been feeling into it and praying about it, and it just felt right. And my dad said, you know, you remind me of your grandfather. He said, figure out what's right and do it. And so for me, just stepping into that, trusting, trusting my intuition and that guidance, and finding what is right for me, stepping into it with faith, with um, determination, with just trusting that, that that's what's right for me, no matter what other people are telling me, whether or not they understand who I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Just standing up and doing what's right for me. Um, I believe one of the defining moments when that rebel became sacred was when everything felt like it was crumbling around me. My marriage was falling apart. Um, I was realizing that the program I'd gone back to learn in grad school was not the direction I wanted to go in. The career wasn't what I wanted to do. I was still, I think I had been in that mindset of trying to prove myself, trying to find a traditional job to show that I was capable of adulting, of, of taking care of myself. And nothing was working again. And um, it was the final week of the semester. Um, emotions were high with, with my now ex-husband. Um, there was stress with that. I had finals coming up. I had papers due and projects. I was in clinicals with my classes and just felt completely lost. I had no energy left for anything, no time. And it was, it was at the time of Standing Rock and there was a global prayer of peace. Um, and I knew I didn't have time according to all of the things I had going on. But I took that moment and turned everything off except for the computer with the Zoom call, with that global peace, that global unity call um, of prayer and peace, and just sat with it and recognized that there's something greater. And all of those things I was trying to force were never going to work. And in that moment, I just surrendered everything. It was like I just let everything fall away. It was all crumbling anyway, and so I let it go. And a poem came through me and it was like this new spark was ignited and it felt like after you know tears and and just like so falling to the floor everything crumbling I felt like a phoenix rising and that was the day that I surrendered my marriage I surrendered that path in grad school and career that didn't fit and really everything shifted after that it was my life has not been the same since that moment, and it's become more and more beautiful every day. The sacred rebel that's inspired me. Um, the first thing that came to mind, actually, is my father. Um, he was a brilliant man with so many gifts and skills and capabilities, yet so humble and down to earth. Everybody he met, it was like he was just right on their level, right with them, could connect with them no matter who they were, and I think make them feel good about themselves. And he bucked the norms. He, did, he went into the military, but he didn't follow all the rules. And um, there was one thing I read recently after he passed. We were going through some of his stuff, and he had... Um, some of his reviews or his evaluations. And one of them said that he was the one voice pushing for equal, equal opportunity employment at a time when it was not popular. He came from Alabama, from Selma, and he showed up at the march not knowing what it was really all about, but he knew 
that there were women that were his, that were the lunch ladies growing up, that showed him so much love, and he knew he had to show up for them, even though he didn't understand the bigger picture. And he just showed up in love, and he offered oatmeal and water to these women marching. And so this, you know, in the 60s, he was a college student um, in this small town where he was taught all these things that he didn't believe, and he just showed up in love. Um, my experience with Freedom Folk and Soul, um, I actually, <laughs> so I, the, earlier what I was talking about with the, the time that I was trying to explain to my parents what I was doing, the trip that I was going on was to Sedona for the gathering of the shamans. I didn't have the money, but I went as a volunteer and I was working the registration table for the sign-in and Stephanie and Jeremy came up because Stephanie was the performer for the weekend. And um, right when they walked up, I said, I knew you, I, or I know you. And I realized, no, I don't, I don't know you. And we just both kind of laughed and smiled, all three of us kind of laughed and smiled. And, and I can't remember, if, I think it was Stephanie that said, I feel it too. And so we kind of realized, okay, maybe we, we haven't met in person, but there was a connection um, from who knows when or who knows where. Um, but from that moment on, we kept connecting through the weekend. And by the end of the weekend, um, Stephanie was telling me about this trip to Teo coming up. And she said, well, this one's all booked up, but you've got to go. You gotta, I, I really feel like you should come with me sometime. And so I was like, yeah, I'll think about it. But in my mind, I was making all the excuses. Well, I just spent every cent I had to come out here. There's no way I could go to, to Teo anytime soon. Um, and she... She said, okay, well, we'll f when it's time, you'll be able to go, you know. And on the way home, she sent an email that I received when I got off the plane that said, we had two cancellations. I'm offering half price. And I've already looked up the flights from Austin. It's only 120 bucks, you know. And, you know, she said, let me know. I need to know by tomorrow. And I was still, I was like, half price? I still don't have half price, you know. And I wasn't believing. And tomorrow, the next day, I uh, went and picked up my held mail and in it was an insurance check that I forgot I'd filed a claim for about six months prior. And it was, I think, 10 or $11 more than the amount she quoted me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to Teo. <laughs> so I get it, I get it, I'm going to Teo. And that, that was the story of how I got to Sedona, that was the story of how I got to Teo. And beyond that, um, I, again, I followed my heart and the faith um, that all things are possible when you believe that they're true. And you know, I followed that all the way to Zimbabwe and South Africa and was able to work with you know, this phenomenal human being in Zimbabwe and be shown, I was shown some of his traditional um, spiritual practices and connecting to the land there and the earth. And, and then I got to go spend time with the white lions and, and gain another perspective on the world and our connection and how everything is, is, there really is a universal connection, a divine energy that flows through all of us. And so working with Freedom, Folk and Soul has, has really just it's brought a new awareness of my light and the light that reflects back to me through everything that I do. It's, it's allowed me to refocus and trust and know that I have the power within me. I am capable of tapping in and stepping forward and shining my bright, uh, my light so brightly in this world. And uh, Stephanie and Jeremy have been there with me through all of that. They've seen it in me. They saw it in me often before I saw it. And um, just really offered me that the opportunity to show up and shine and say yes when I was scared and lean into that fear and just trust that it was the right thing. And again, that, that actually goes back to figuring out what's right and doing it. 